This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Will 1993's new shows ever end? From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Way Through Comics on iTunes, and we're on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Huh. <laughs> this is interminable. Yes. <laughs> so let's finish up with 1993's new shows from TV Guide. Uh, the Nanny on CBS. Lucy's back with a Long Island accent you could cut a diamond with in the form of Fran Drescher. She stumbles into the job of nanny for Broadway producer Charles Shaughnessy, who has three kids, Daniel Davis, Madeline Zima, heir to the wine cooler fortune? I guess. And Nicole Tom. She also has to deal with his business partner, rival, played by Lauren Lane, but Fran has the butler, Daniel Davis, on her side. The show primarily showed Fran getting into physical shtick a la Lucy, and a will they or won't they that lasted much of the series. Like all long-running series, Fran and the producer do get hitched. In fact, the business partner and the butler even get married, despite all logic, at the end of the series. There was a lot of breaking the fourth wall to get a laugh, and more and more dream sequences as the show went on. In a strange development, after Drescher experienced a home invasion in 1995, the studio audience was pre-screened as professional laughers. The show was never a critical darling, winning a single Emmy for costuming, but it ran for six seasons. South of Sunset on CBS. That well-known actor Glenn Fry from the Eagles has the honor of starring in this one-and-done detective series, as in one episode. It was never provided to critics in advance, which is not a good sign, but was highly promoted during the World Series before its premiere. Some of the country didn't even see it, as West Coast stations preempted it for news coverage of local wired fires. At that point, CBS decided to cut its losses. Now on NBC, another news magazine, this time pairing Tom Brokaw and Katie Couric. Also another example of soothing journalist egos by giving them a primetime series. It only lasted a season and then was merged into Dateline NBC. Grace Under Fire on ABC. Yep, it's another stand-up getting a sitcom. Brett Butler stars as a recovering alcoholic single mom of three kids working at an oil refinery and trying to stay above water. There's also a local pharmacist, Dave Thomas, who's in a relationship with Brett's Grace. It was the highest rated new show in its first season. There's a bit of a soap opera vibe to it. How much more can Grace take? With various refinery workers, friends, and relatives coming in and out of this series. So Grace eventually quits the refinery, goes back to school, and ends up working as an admin for a construction company. Now, throughout the series, Butler fought her own personal demons in real life, alcohol and painkillers. One of the kids' roles changed actors three times, and once because Butler flashed the 12-year-old actor. Actors left the show due to Butler's bad behavior, and at some points, the show had to write around the comedian because she missed tapings. Julia Duffy was brought on near the end of season five as a new friend of Grace's, but it was too little too late. But you might have heard of the show's creator, Chuck Lorre. Mm. Moon Over Miami on ABC. Fans of 80s romance detective series like Moonlighting and Remington Steel might have liked this series. Unlike the other shows, The Girl is the loose cannon. Ellie Walker plays a rich girl who wants to make it on her own, and Billy Campbell is a Miami detective she runs into. The show lasted all of 10 episodes, although 13 were produced. Walker went on to profiling and Campbell to the OC and the killing. Moving on to Thursday, Missing Persons, ABC. Now this sounds like a documentary series, but it's really more like The Love Boat. Daniel J. Travanti stars as the head of a police squad charged with finding missing persons with three tales told each episode. His squad included Dexter's Eric King and CSI's Georgia Fox. One of the guest actors in an early episode was none other than Stephen Colbert, who did a lot of guest work at the time. The show ran for 17 episodes. The Sinbad Show on Fox. More stand-ups getting sitcoms. A swinging bachelor inexplicably takes in two foster kids. T.K. Carter plays his buddy, and a young Selma Hayek plays a neighbor grad student babysitter. It's quick cancellation after less than a season, along with... Several other short-lived shows with predominantly African-American casts created a move to boycott Fox, but it was the ratings that did it. Frasier on NBC. Using the same studio as that Boston bar, Dr. Frasier Crane, Kelsey Grammer, moves to Seattle to become a radio talk show host. 
but he winds up having to live with his grouchy ex-cop father, Martin, John Mah Mahoney. They bring in physical therapist Daphne, uh, because Martin was shot in the line of duty, uh, was played by Jane Leaves. And then Frazier's even more snooty brother, Niles, David Hyde Pierce, is smitten with Daphne. Perry Gilpin plays Roz, Frazier's radio show producer. Now, Grammer had worked out a deal with a group from the Cheers production team that went on to Wings that they would do a show with him once Cheers ended, but it was not supposed to be a continuation of the Frasier character. NBC had to convince him to do that. Concerns that moving Frasier to a regular private practice would make it look like the Bob Newhart show, and that a radio-heavy show would draw comparisons to WKRP in Cincinnati, it was decided to have a split between work and home life. TV Guide thought it might have a chance, having it follow the new hit Seinfeld. I guess it did pretty well. It won 37 Emmys during its 11-year run, breaking the record of the Mary Tyler Moore show. Game of Thrones now holds the record. Grammer and Pierce each won four of those Emmys. Grammer would be nominated for the Frasier character on three shows, Frasier, Cheers, and Wings. Pierce was nominated every one of those 11 seasons. A British Film Institute survey in 2000 of 1,600 industry experts named it the greatest international program of all time. It was in the top 30 ratings for all 11 seasons and then in the top 10 for three of them. Grammer was at one point the highest paid TV actor playing the Frasier character for 20 years. Only Richard Belzer's John Munch on Dick Wolf shows did it longer. Grammer recently hinted at a reboot. Why not? Every other 90s show is doing it. He hasn't had much luck since then. Angel Falls on CBS, a nighttime soap that premiered about a decade late. A large cast including Peggy Lipton, Grace Zabriskie, both of whom would go on to anti-soap Twin Peaks, Kim Cattrall, Gene Simmons, James Brolin, and Jeremy London populated this Montana-based series. It didn't get much of a chance to get soapy because it only lasted six episodes. Friday, It Had to Be You on CBS. Businesswoman Faye Dunaway hires Carpenter's single father of three boys, Robert Urich, and Sparks Fly. At least, that was the concept. Four episodes in, the show was taken back to the shop for retooling, with Dunaway dropped and Yurik's single father routine becoming the show's main theme. The show's cast photo even looks like Dunaway was an afterthought. A new pilot and four additional episodes were produced, but never aired. Co-creators Andrew Nichols and Daryl Vickers also created The Trouble with Larry, whose show shared the booby prize for earliest cancellations. <laughs> The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. on Fox, a vehicle for Bruce Campbell which became a cult classic. He plays a Harvard-educated bounty hunter in a weird Wild West full of ac anachronisms. It's really more steampunk. Mm -hmm. And there's something called the Orb, a device from the future which drives much of the plotline. John Aston plays his version of Q, providing Briscoe with various gadgets. Unfortunately, the show was stuck on Fox on Friday night, still a death trap, and only lasted a season. The show's stirring opening theme is now used by NBC for its sports coverage. Mm. One of the show's creators, Carlton Cuse, would go on to Lost. Against the Grain on NBC. A proto Friday Night Lights and inspired by the book with John Terry, later on 24 and Lost, as a former high school football star who becomes coach to his former team in this drama. His son is a player on the team and a name you might recognize, Ben Affleck. Buried on Friday night, it barely made it through the football season. Boy Meets World on ABC. Another entry in the TGIF stables, starring Ben Savage, Fred's brother, as Corey, a boy making his way through school and adolescence. And he's always sparring with his teacher, Mr. Feeney, played by William Daniels. There's love interest to Ponga, Daniel Fischel, and other friends and family. The, uh, the characters and the show grow up over seven seasons, and eventually Corey and Topanga marry. In fact, their daughter Riley becomes the star of a spin-off slash sequel, Girl Meets World, which ran for four seasons on the Disney Channel from 2014 through 2017. Family album on CBS. Peter Scolari returns to TV as the father of a family who moves to Philadelphia to be closer to their in-laws. A lot of arguing and wackiness ensues. Pamela Reed plays his wife. There's very little info about this show since it only lasted six episodes with two additionally unaired. NBC Friday Night Mystery, an updated version of the network's 1970 franchise with a rotating wheel of two-hour TV movies involving mysteries and whodunits. Raymond Burr returned for Perry Mason, but died only after two movies had been shot. Robert Wagner and Stephanie Powers returned for more Heart to Heart, and Richard Krenna continued a series of Janik police detective movies. 
Kenny Rogers played a con man on McShane, while Larry Hagman played an ex-millionaire detective on Staying Afloat. Bill Cosby used the series to pilot his Cosby mystery show. Pierce Brosnan was scheduled to have a private eye series, but the mystery wheel rolled into the dust by then. The X-Files on Fox. The exception which proves the rule that Fox Friday night is a death trap. Mulder, David Duchovny, is an FBI agent who wants to believe, taking on cases about paranormal phenomenon, and Scully, Julian Anderson, is his skeptical partner. Over time, it becomes clear that the government is conspiring to keep all of this secret and an alien invasion underway. In the middle of all this, there's a whole will-they-or-won't-they thing between the leads. Mulder is abducted by the aliens in Season 7, while Scully goes back to Quantico to train new agents. So Robert Patrick and Annabeth Gish become the show's leads, and this was actually the result of contract negotiations. A theatrical film was made during the hiatus between Seasons 4 and 5, and a second film was made as a follow-up to the series, which would run for nine seasons. After many false starts and missteps, the show got a revival in 2016, which generated two more seasons. And there's also the Lone Gunman spin-off series, which ran for 13 episodes. This was one of the first shows to get a major boost from the Information Superhighway, as fans had an easy way to communicate for the first time. Most paranormal series going forward would be described as X-Files meets fill-in-the-blank. So to recap, there were a lot of new TV shows in 1993, 34 new series, 12 of which could be considered hits, meaning they had multiple seasons, including The Mommies, Lois and Clark, Sequest DSV, Living Single, Dave's World, The John Larroquette Show, NYPD Blue, The Nanny, Grace Under Fire, Frasier, Boy Meets World, and The X-Files. And since we were so busy with our wedding, we probably didn't see very many no. of those. We can check them out again, though, on Netflix. And while we're doing that, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Nidhi. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.